and we're going to keep going with the rest of the notes here. Decomposing functions. So we just talked in the previous video about composing functions by putting one inside another. Now we're going to talk about if I have a function that looks like it's made up of two functions that are being composed, how do I actually break that apart? So this is example four in our book. So we have for each function h, find functions f and g such that h of x equals f of g of x. So we're saying that there's some function g of x that's being plugged into f so that I can separate this into two functions. And um, your answers can vary on this. A lot of times there's a really easy way to write it, and then if you want to be you know, more creative, you can come up with a more difficult way. On this first one, what, what really matters here is we have x plus 1 in parentheses here, and we have x plus 1 in parentheses here. So let's say that that is g of x. That's what we were plugging in. Sometimes it helps just to go ahead and pick something, even if you don't know where it's going. If I say that I'm plugging in x plus 1 into whatever f of x was, now I just need to say, well, what would f of x have been? Well, that means that this would have been an x instead of an x plus 1, and this would have been an x instead of an x plus 1, which means f of x has to equal x squared minus 3x plus 4. So, and if you try that out, then you'll see that that's, that would be f of g of x. Alright, on b, we're going to do the same thing. First, let's figure out what g of x was. What could I have plugged in to a different function? Well, I've got a square root here that I could have plugged x cubed plus 1 into. So, let's make that g of x then that means that f of x would have been what I get if I just think of this part as an x. That would have been just the square root of x. Okay, and then I can go back and look at it and say, oh, well, if I plug x cubed plus 1 in for x, yep, I get the square root of x cubed plus 1. So hopefully those won't be too bad. And the last thing we're going to talk about is implicitly defined functions. Okay, so we started earlier in the chapter talking about functions, and if something is not a function but still creates a relationship between x's and y's, we call that a, a relation. Okay, so the relation x squared plus y squared equals 4 is not a function. There's a lot of reasons that we could go through and say that, but maybe the most relevant one is that this is a circle with a radius of 2, all the way around. And so that does not pass the vertical line test, so it's not a function. But at the same time, we still want to know that x squared plus y squared equals 4 is a circle. We still want to know things about it. It's still a useful relationship. And it also turns out if we solve this equation for y, we can write two equations that are functions. So let's try that. If I have x squared plus y squared equals 4, I want to solve it for y. The first thing I'm going to do is subtract the x squared over. So I get y squared equals 4 minus x squared. Okay, that's the first one. Then I can go ahead and take the square root of that to get y by itself. But here's the thing. If I am taking the square root in a problem, I need to put a plus or minus in front of the square root. If the book has put a square root somewhere, then they already know that that's either positive or negative. But I'm taking the square root. I did it right here. I wrote that. So that's why I need a plus or minus in front. And that's how we get algebraically that this is not a function, because now if I plug a number into x, I'm going to end up with two answers. Well, what I can do is I can say that these are two different functions. I have y equals positive square root of 4 minus x squared, and I have y equals negative square root of 4 minus x squared. And if we were to graph those on our graphing calculator, where we put the first one in as y1 and the second one in as y2, and we graph that, it's going to look like a circle. If we only graph one of them, we're going to have half a circle. So because individually these two things are functions, 
what we can do is we can say that the two functions are defined implicitly by the given relation. So in one of our sections of homework, they're going to give us something that looks like this, that it's a relationship, not a function. And they want us to figure out, how could I write that as two functions and basically get the same thing? And so um, this concept of solving for y, where we realize, hey, I need a, a plus or minus, that's one way of figuring out what the implicitly defined functions are. And that's going to wrap up 1.4.